overthrow and by Mitch. Yeah. I mean, the injured bear on the field is Akeem Hicks. Cousins loses the football. Strip sack and take away. Bears are alive. But Khalil Bears are alive. We go all live right after Bears games with your boys Draft Talks and the smartest man alive. Yo. Bears are alive. Bears are alive. We're going live. We go on live right after Bears games with your boys, Trap Talk, and the smartest man alive. Bring it up with the true analysis. You expect raw passion for the jokes. Bear fans get nothing left. Locked in with real emotion and passion for every play. Go to bring that range. range. But then with facts, my shame. Post game show like nothing else you're gonna hear. Some, Some can try to copy, but a bucket's not sincere. Delivering the truth on what just happened to be clear. That's why we're on TV so you, you can see it, not just here. Hey, when Ooh, draft box, you feel you know it's always hit sticks Splitting double teams like 96 Akeem hits You can tell the shit matters A bit love can be felt Critical of Nagy cause the talent he's been dealt Cause our life keeps growing Chains all knowing Delivering the truth on how the QB's growing Dimes on time are just lacking fundamental Whatever the case, we get hot like Cecil Fiery discussions about what happened in the game This ain't your daddy's post game, don't expect the fucking flame Not for the average man, all they can survive but don't you worry. Bears our live. Bears our live. Bears our live. We go on live right after Bears games with their boys trap the talk and the smartest the myth, men alive. The Bears our live. Dr. Phil. Bears our live. We go on live right after Bears games with their boys trap talk and the smartest men alive. Bears our live. Bears our live. Bears our live. The Tape Never Lies Network. This is Bears Hour Live. This team did it. They're making me a Philadelphia Eagles fan today, guys. Can't <laughs> believe it. 33-27 Chicago Bears go up into Minnesota. Uh, major question marks still loom with this defense. Uh, we're starting to see some live, some life on offense, I guess I should say. But um, we're starting to see what we need to see on offense. I'm not a big believer in what Minnesota does, so we still have to keep that in the back of our heads. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, but we're seeing David Montgomery be featured and him still continue to... Uh, eat up yardage and get in the end zone but uh this is a this is a big one these guys got to keep on continuing to do it got jacksonville coming up and they got to keep their eyes on that and not overlook it to green bay because if they keep on going we all know that that's where it's going to come down to is green bay week 17 in chicago all eyes are going to be on this defense all eyes are going to be on mitch trubisky all eyes are going to be on matt Nagy in a week 17 possible showdown but you can't you can't look at that game yet you got to move past this one set your sights on jacksonville go down there handle business chicago bears big win today uh big big game from number 32 that's what we've been waiting for for the this offense to turn the reins over to him let him eat but uh i'm also going to turn the thing over here to draft dr phil and we're going to listen to uh a little bit of positivity i think maybe a little bit just a little bit you never know in his uh rant after a, after a big win here in chicago what's up boys girls ladies gentlemen big big win against the division rival that's what it's about, football. The element of fundamentals was showcased out there on the football field today, led by number 10, who's had a lot of hate, who's had a lot of emotional moments, I'm sure, looking in the mirror, having to find his own identity within a team that's coached in turmoil and chaos. When I look at this football game and you're going up against a known opponent that you have gone up against and lost and probably should have won, but you lost. 
you're asking your players to step up. And it's unfortunate because I've been on the record by putting my actual name to the tape studies that I do here at the network. I don't hide behind falsehoods or phone calls. I, I put my name to it and I identified the identity long ago. And it started with number 32. And when you look at this football team and all of the story, you're having a chance at hope. You have that person on the ground that's trying to breathe air. They're choking. Do you sit there with your fucking camera and watch it and film it? Or you step in and help out? The real people, what I've discovered, this world is full of easy decisions. Demon people. Not many people are willing to step up to the occasion. Today I saw number 32 step up to the occasion. Number 10, step up to the occasion. And despite Matt Nagy's inability, unwillingness to discover the run, maybe Bill Lazor did it for him and Cordero Patterson's injury is the impetus for you to discover your identity. But every person that's watching this show or is a fan of Shane and this network and myself knows who the fuck is saying this shit should be done all the time. You want to see good Mitch? Boo. You want to see good Mitch? Run the ball. Action often. Get off center. Get under center. These are, these are documented. This is it. Let's just speak it now and board that train. That's why we have almost 500 patrons. That's why I sound like a fucking maniac sometimes because I know the remedy to win the game is like somebody in the chat saying I'm fucking shadow calling plays because that's what I saw out there. This is your opponent. They're down players. Attack them physically. Set the tone. And you did it. I've been saying this about 32 every week on the tape never lies. It's no secret how good this motherfucker is. Don't get in your face with balance, drive, he doesn't go down, he's got great hands. I think the only person on the team with better hands is Darnell Mooney than number 32. Show me where he's dropped the ball. I think he's got one drop in his career. One fumble in his career. I don't want to jinx the kid. You get that kind of consistency there as a head coach, you gotta define that for your team. And then challenge them. Eddie Jackson, the big soft bump, challenged them. Although you did save the game at the end. I'll give you that. But tackling, you destroyed this team. Those of you hating Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn, oh, Phil was right. Shane was right. Don't fucking jump on the narrative with these fucking clowns. Reality of football is one in the trenches. I don't defend anybody that doesn't need Defending? I defend people that are being falsely accused. This offensive line, even Charles Leno Shane, as I said at the halftime, came out there and fired out and played with passion. He said this is Nagy's last stand. Well, the team responded. And that's what you want to see from your football team. You go up to Minnesota, you take Kirk Cousins by the fucking throat, and you throw his ass down. And then you challenge every person in there. This can't be one and done. You got to play the shitty Jags next week. You don't go down to their level. You don't celebrate this win. You celebrate together. And that is my rant. Got some new music, Shane, this week. Got to shout out my boy, Tyrone Jackson. Given making us, making us some music, Shane. There you go. Yeah, it's nice. We didn't go full blown positivity there, but uh, at least we, we at least got we got a little positive bit positive in there. Yeah, it's nice. We can't be celebrating things that aren't. <laughs> we don't do that on this network. No. I, sometimes I get caught in it. Never will. Of... Never will either. Exactly. Not on my watch. <laughs> I, we keep saying things for years, and I really depend on people like. Michael Imes and Edwin Lopez and Otis Nichols 
to be my voice, or Costantino over in Greece, to be my voice, because I see people saying exactly what I've said for fucking, sorry, Shane, for fucking three years, and now they're saying it like they're the only ones that fucking said it. I'm tired of it. This network is not going to go anywhere but to the top. You run the ball, give him what? Feed this guy, right, Shane? Feed every. We saw this against the Giants. Yeah. This is your fucking ticket to the playoffs. You got a great defense, great talent. You got to run the ball and help Mitch discover the passing game off action. Give him that half field. Give him the just, re- just not the JP Holtz. Just not oh to JP. Can we talk about that? Like, let's get the negative out of the way. I mean, we'll I know you had the, you have PI could have been called on there oh, for yeah. Allen Robinson, but I saw it. I didn't even see it during. Yeah, I, I mean, watching. Phil, it's. Whew, I don't know, man. Oh my! That God. was just that was. What's you, the decision? You, you loved everything that you were seeing up to that point. You know, I had no problem with any of it and he went to unleash and i'm like oh boy Why here we go there. There, though. like yeah no i the get one it thing, man. the matchup you need is freaking inside why can't you just run inside just yeah. drives me crazy but yeah, the decision by mitch listen i'm a big proponent of this if i was the head coach and i made that call i'm going to the stage and i'm saying that's on me shouldn't have been throwing there and how the fuck did I have J.P. Holtz in the game? I don't right. care what level of football you play on. Awful. Then let's get rid of this. Ter- uh, Cousins, two yards across the line of scrimmage before the half, throwing the football in the end zone. These two fucking clowns, Myers and Jennings, don't even talk about that. And thankfully, Smith drops the ball. But the reality is, the ref, you're right there. Then you get the fucking Victoria's Secret models out there playing defense, and they call a phantom pass interference. It wouldn't even be called in that fucking uh, women's league of football. How that play, that penalty there on kill uh, uh, Kendall Vildor. 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 Yeah, it's awful. That was the worst interference call. It sustained their drive, gave them momentum, and made this game closer than it should be. Now, one thing I want to clear up. Great defense. Yes, you have a great defense. Are they playing like it? Let's not be dumb here. That's what I'm talking about. They have a The Bears have a great defense. They're not playing like it. That's why we get so fired up. They're not finishing assignments. In the secondary. That's the issue right now. Anybody want to challenge that? Let's go to the patron channel. Sign up and watch the defensive breakdown. You challenged on Quinn. You said he's a fucking bust. The most overrated. What did it, What were they saying, Shane? The worst signing in Ryan Pace's history. Robert Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> Complete narrative false. Mike Glennon takes that. And there's about six more. Then you got Khalil Mack doesn't hustle. That's fucking ridiculous. The guy has two shins. I was talking to a player this week. They can't even believe Mac is playing. I'm putting breaking news here. Two shin splints, a shoulder injury, and a swollen knee. He's out there playing hard. In fact, the Brent Urban play, Shane? Yep. Let's talk about what they were trying to do. They were trying to get Mac to suck up in there and be aggressive on Cousins. But Max played sound football. He saw the tight end coming, knew the play, and carried the tight end with him and let Brett Urban be contained. And Mac and Urban stopped them on fourth and one, which they tried to run that action. That's how disciplined those those things. That didn't hit the stat book, Shane. No. It, it didn't. It, Phil, where was your confidence level when you saw that interception by Mitch with this defense? You know, I mean, it's I I had been texting you guys, or maybe maybe it was a tweet. I can't remember exactly, but that that offense needed to put seven on the board there. That was the way that I felt. Oh, you know, I going up by six to me wasn't going to do it. Thankfully, it all worked out. But then, I mean, that that turnover down there is just. I mean. Yes, I understand it's a trickle down, you, personnel, play call, whatever. 
end of the day, Mitch Trubisky can't make that throw. That was he he, t- he, he just can't. He can't. I totally and agree. I know that there's going to be the 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 truthers or whatever you want to call yourself. Everything. It's again, it's not a one person issue. It's not just because you want to hold Mitch accountable. And I know there's going to be people out there that that hear that and say that you were you're piling on and you're looking for one thing. It's a part of the process. It's a very very big deal. Mitch should have been better there, but there was a lot. I saw a difference in the mentality of Mitchell Trubisky today in terms of his running, in terms of when he was in the pocket, making the, making the, the, the passes fill down the field in rhythm. Confidence. Yeah, leading the guys so they can make a play, so they can continue their run. Those little things all matter. I just hated to see that interception down there by Mitch. It sucks because it ruins – what I was ready to rant about and give him all this credit, really. That was my gut in this game, that the Bears were going to go down there, they were going to score a touchdown, and they didn't. They did it. And the thing that just pisses me off is J.P. Holtz in the game there. So it makes it even more before. Phil, we talked about him not even deserving a roster spot, and I still maintain that. It's true. I I say it every week. He was my bear down last week. Yeah. He can't even do what he's assigned or on a roster to do yet. Listen, whose fault is it that he's on the field? It ain't Mitch's fault. Mitch played a great fucking game today. Yeah, that it, shit decision. It, it, I can't let it ruin what I saw, and I won't. But. It needs to obviously. And Phil, one thing I think we need to put out there, and I see, I see this uh, catching fire on social media. In turn, yes, Bill Lazor is calling the plays, but let's not fool yourselves. I mean, if you if you're calling out the play and you're, you're talking about Matt Nagy, the first thing a lot of people are doing or defaulting and say, "Oh, you idiot! You don't realize that Bill Lazor's calling plays." <laughs> Did you guys not see the fucking press conferences this, this week? You don't uh, think that Matt Nagy is heavily influenced in each and every play and decision that's made during the game? Just go back and listen to Bill Lazor and see where his confidence level is in in speaking out on this offense. If you don't think that Matt re- Nagy... I can yeah. imitate it for you. Would you yeah. like? Go yeah. ahead. Um... Uh, You'll have to talk to the head yeah. coach about that. So if Shane, Shane asked me, I'm Bill Lazor or Phil Atosha, I'm calling plays. The head coach told that, right? Go ahead. Yeah. Ask, are you calling plays? <laughs> My answer is simple. Yes, I'm calling plays. And I'm going out there, and we are going to attack this football. If a guy that's calling plays unequivocally him, he is not going, um, right. uh, you'll have to talk. Shut the fuck up. Listen, we don't give we don't do rumors or narratives here. The reality is what is on the tape and what we see in the game. You might see something different. Like somebody, one of my buddies is seeing Khalil Mack effort being questioned today. I didn't see that at all. I didn't see Khalil Mack not once loaf. I saw Akeem Hicks loaf. Ooh. I saw him playing like shit where I would have fucking pulled him out of the game. I agree, Phil. We a fucking we, earful. I was and very disappointed in 96. Yes. I saw Eddie Jackson playing like fucking the same fucking thing. I even said it. Go. It's document. Go fucking pull Eddie out of the game. I don't care. Put Crawford in. Put fucking Mc, what's his name? Who had the, the fucking interception, the special team or at the end. What's his name? McManus, put him at safety. Send a message of accountability to get this fucking team's. You know how you hit that fucking thing? I forget what it is, astronometer or some shit. Bing! Fucking, you need to get them back in that rhythm of who they are. Because right now, if you allow guys like Eddie Jackson slow thing and take it. Phil, he took off on that. They, They had that one dump off to Cook. Eddie oh Jackson had he had the perfect angle at him. He thought he thought he was gonna go out. He thought Cook was gonna run out of bounds, and he didn't. And so Eddie Jackson pulled up, and then he realized that he didn't go out of bounds. And by, by that point, I mean Cook was 
up the field for 10 or 12 more yards. But Tuning fork. Thank you, HL Priest. <laughs> you were epically wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're right. He's taking plays out there off. He's an issue. We focus on the real. I'm not coming out here with pom-poms, okay? I'm not doing that. I'm a realistic person that just relies on the tape. They're the same pattern of Nagy continued. Let's go back and think of this. 19 yards, Montgomery, okay? What happens? The very next play, Corderell Patterson's in the game. Walter Payton gets 19 yards. Is fucking Neil Anderson going in? No. No fucking way. If Dalvin Cook gets 19 yards on the first play, he's not tired, folks. He's not hurt. He's not tired. This isn't like the fourth quarter. He gets 19. And okay, I'm going to give my guy a rest. This is the first play of the game. It's like last week, 80 yard touchdown run. The next year, it, so Nagy was doing it. So don't start championing this shit that Nagy, he lucked in. It's almost like we have to luck into injury to get the right yeah. thing to happen. And then that, and that's the truth. That's the, that's the truth. And that's why. I'm such a big proponent of moving on from this coach because that game right there, Pagano's at fault too, Shane. But I'll say oh, this. That 100%. game should have been 35-15, maybe 35-12. Totally the Bears beat the shit out of this team, and it becomes closer. It becomes closer. Phil, I'm holding Pagano more accountable. Quite honestly. He's got a lot more he's got a lot more bullets to fucking work with. On Dude. that defense, I mean, you're not talk. You're not talking about potential on the defense. You're talking about fu- all pro level fucking talent that's being paid. And I mean, you're seeing him on a fucking second and nineteen, and Fuller's fifteen fucking yards playing. But it's terrible. I just will never oh understand it. That happened. I'm yeah. Like, what are you doing? It's so simple. How to attack this defense when? You're in those critical third downs. It's like you're going to motion, and you're going to wait to see if the field corner is going to stay pressed back. So he's at nine yards. Yeah. That point, you have to know they're seeing what you're doing, and that's Kyle Fuller. Kyle Fuller. So they brought their Thielens out here. So they got twins. Then they bring them in motion, and you want to see that corner come up. Then you know that you are going to have to make a different decision. If that corner stays off, then that's where you're going. So now you're going to bring someone back over there, force him off, and he's wide open because the nickel can't get over there. This is what teams have done to you. The Packers destroyed you with that. You have to do something different, Pagano, in order to help your team. I thought Shelly, yes, I thought Shelly showed toughness, effort. He was in there. He made a couple key plays, Shane, Shelly Duke, tackling yes. in the open field. That one. <laughs> yeah, we talked Calvin about it at the Duke. halftime show, man. He, he, oh, that he, first one with Cousin. Yeah. Go ahead. You could talk about that. That was oh, a big then, play. Yeah, it was because, Phil, you couldn't ask him to do anything different on that play. It was right. textbook exactly the what you want. Gonna, they threw the flag. We talked that. about it at halftime. I didn't expect them to pick it up, I'll be quite honest. But they well, did. They started they, at the halftime. Yeah, show. exactly. And if you aren't a patron member, get over there. What are you waiting for? Become a patron member. You want to see the real analysis and the breakdowns of the tape? Because I just teach the tape. I let you see what I put up there and show you the truth. So there's no equation that you could then turn around and say, well, you could do this to get to that equation. That's not how football works in regards to video and breakdown. You, there's no way, well, you could be and translate it for yourself. I'm trying to show you exactly why something happened. That's what you do. And hopefully you become a subscriber because we're close to 500. We're close to 500. And hopefully you guys, www.thetapeneverlies.com. As we wait for the head coach, you become a patron this week on Keeping It 100, the Christmas show. That's going to be on tuesday night and it's going to be all patrons that are going to be on there 12 patrons like 12 days of christmas we got some exciting stories to share 
obviously talking about this game and the upcoming game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the playoffs are in the grasp. The playoffs are in the grasp. Thank you, sir. Aria, Aria, Aria for joining this morning. Look at that. Right breaking news. This kid joined this morning. There you go. Shane, I got to talk about this. Uh, there's players that step up in the games and they don't get enough credit sometimes. One of those is one of my boys, John Jenkins. Ooh, I thought he played. Huge, you called him out. Plays. Yeah. Called him out last week. Three plays. He had the tip pass. Yep. He had the fourth down stop. And he also had the big tackle in the open field on the screen play that would have been a big play had he not gotten over there. These are the things that baffle me because these players, Urban, Mario Edwards, these under the road, John Jenkins are making these plays. Mingo has made plays. And you should be more aggressive, Pagano, and you're not because it's not oh, like – Especially when you see the offense doing – Holding up their end of the bargain, like you said, Phil. If the if Bilal the offense, too. Bilal Nichols, oh, he's just that was one of my favorite draft picks. Yeah, Shane could tell you I was all over this guy, but yeah, Bilal Nichols has been the man too. But go ahead, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. I'm just saying that I think early on when this offense, I mean, you couldn't even you couldn't rely on anything on this offense, so you saw Pagano just default to being being so, you know soft and being very very passive with the defense but Phil we saw today every time the bears got the ball pretty much they were scoring it was going to be a field goal it was or they they were scoring touchdowns and at that point when you see that you have to you have to crank up the aggressive meter with this defense because you have exactly. the horses for it you have the horses for it. And let's not undersell. You're talking about, you want to talk about unsung heroes and people stepping up? I mean, I hope Eddie Pinheiro's got his fucking luggage oh packed. Oh, my God, yes. Because, I, Phil, I mean, they, they, these announcers were trying to end the streak. They we were. were using every we were. anecdote possible to try to get it to end. And Santos just goes out there, you know, big nuts, stone cold, knocking them through every single kick. I mean, they're like, the, oh, this one's a 48-yarder, and he's got 22 in a row, and they're they're trying it, and boom, it's uh, right that you know splits the uprights. It's he's a big, big part of another reason why you can be even more aggressive with this defense because you have a, a kicker that's the hottest in the NFL at at his craft. He's the best kicker in the NFL right now. I mean, right now, just on his streak. Yeah. Pro Bowl votes for yeah, him. Oh, my God. 100%. Everybody in the 100 crew, you need to go put a Pro Bowl vote for that kid. Shane, he took the words right out of my brain. I wanted to make sure in my notes, Cairo Santos was talked about. Talk about being clutch on the road huh. and making these kicks to put the game and always put you up uh, by two possessions. Those kickers that are clutch like that. Yeah, how big into. How big was that to, to extend the lead? Oh, my God. Six. I mean, you, you saw what happened huge. at the end of the game. I mean, because quite honestly, Phil, I know you'll break it down a little bit more. The Vikings weren't that far off from scoring a touchdown there. If you oh. really want to break it down, I'll tell Eddie you that. Jackson saves a yeah. game there because Ch Charlie Johnson – is going to come down with that football. Yeah. And I saw somebody in the chat, and I, I'm not going to blame you. He's got to be batting that down. The thing, I said the same thing, but the reality was when you look at that play, he turns and can't get high enough to extend to come down. So you need to tip it out of the guy's possession. He's about to get possession. So Eddie Jackson, for all his warts in this game, and believe me, he doesn't get a free pass. I am going to um, give him credit, uh, though. Command in the offense. Oh, we got, Thanks, we got the coach. Uh, David yeah, Ramsey tail off up. the offensive line, block the tight ends, the wide receivers made big catches, and a credit to our coaching staff. So I, I love the way the that that went. Um, and, Again, and if you guys want to watch the coach as as defense, without our comments, uh, I thought go watch it on the Bears.com channel. Situations in this Here game we talk about what the coach could be a different outcome. They're fighters. 
and uh, they, they care a lot. And that will and never we had change. A couple guys out today, and I thought the young guys came in and played, played well. Uh, you know, those two fourth and ones that we had were huge stops. Claude, uh, get credit the to the coaching staff for getting those guys right there. And and then, um, uh, you know, special teams wise, again for Cairo to go four for four, uh, for C CP to to, to kind of you know tough it out through through a little bit of an injury, um, and just you know field position wise, I thought was good. So, uh, you know, it's exciting for us right now. We know we have two more guaranteed for us and, uh, we're, you know, we feel good about all that. So with that, Dude, I'll go ahead. We, I don't think we question. punted at all today. First up, Pat Finley. Perfectly honest. I don't think there was one punt. Matt, how much did Cairo's, uh, Cairo first contribute question. to your game plan there in the fourth quarter? You know, twice you run the ball to set up that field goal. It's and not game how plan. How different is it Pat, coaching with that it's sort of play call? Yeah, it's big because you look at where you're at in that position. And uh, Harrison Smith made a great play. He shot the he shot the gap, and it was a tough block for Cole. If Cole gets that block, we're running around the edge. We had that play schemed up and ready for that situation, so we all felt good about that. But Harrison's a Pro Bowl player, and he, he's he's a vet. He's a savvy vet, and he made a good play. I thought Mitch did a good job of not losing four or five yards. And just getting up in there, you know, north and south. And so, um, yeah, we're in a position right now when that happens that you feel very confident with your kicker. And he's proven us uh, that he's going to make those. And so uh, as far as where you're at in certain situations, uh, it definitely helps out with some of the play calling, but not, but not all of it. Yeah. Adam Hoke. It should. Right? I mean, it's simple. Matt, what did you specifically like about how Mitch ran the offense today? I think at one point you had six straight drives where you got points uh, and you didn't. Remind actually, was seven or eight coach that all this the way the rest is not of the game, him calling the, the plays anymore. Uh, but then on the interception, you can see how what he was supposed it. to happen there because uh, it was a little weird seeing Holtz out. Not weird. Yes. It's different seeing Holtz there outside. You go, Adam. It was a little confusing there about where the go. pass was actually going. Why is yeah, that? So why is it was JP great to see it? the way that he ran the offense all day today um, in decision making with these nakeds getting onto the edge and. It's it's a stress to the defense with the moving parts, and uh, I think he's doing a really good <laughs> we haven't job. Haven't figured it out just yet. Commanding that it stresses and, and making the defense. Good decisions. Having uh, made some nice that. throws over the middle, the wide receivers and tight ends made some great catches. Run after the catch, so all of that right now is a little bit of our identity that we that we're we're clicking with, and so we'll, we'll continue to keep that a going. little of his identity. Um, some different You're things talking about a guy worried about his so job. You see, when he has to throw the ball 21 times. And we're able to run the ball with one running back for 32 attempts. It's it makes offense a, a lot easier, and it's, it's effective. Uh, in, in regards to that that final play there, that interception, uh, we we emptied them out, and we uh, uh, now JP was in there replacing Demetrius Harris, who's usually well. Maybe you should have uh, put another time. receiver in so, the game, uh, jackass. We'll have to ask. We'll go back and watch the tape, but we have some advantage throws that we like and. I'm not sure if the ball kind of got away from him a little bit if he was going to A Rob and the ball just kind of floated. I thought the corner made a good job. He fell off. And and obviously I know that bothered Mitch uh on that play, but we were able to Demetrius to get that stop Harris was hurt. Shane. That's down, why you know, JP was out know, there. Points. Instead of putting Kyle Riley Lincoln. Ridley. Yeah. Like a fucking normal. Hey Matt, how would you describe how David Montgomery Let's played today? JP and was a fucking glorified like his, uh, nobody. touchdown run. Yeah, that 14 yard touchdown run was awesome because he runs so hard. He, he's really, awesome. really, really I, hard I, to bring. I don't know our guy. identity, he runs but with just, you know, just extreme Jesus passion. Right. The guys love that. We're feeding off of him. Uh, I mean, you, you guys need to see They're feeding the off way of that him. he practices every day. I mean, <laughs> he just finishes every run down to the goal line and comes But let me get Cordova out so much. And the, the big O line are. are Blocking their tails off for him, and it's just we're we're in. Let me say this right now: while it's fresh in there, blocking the wide receiver. If you're in practice in there, saying that it's it's, as a head right coach, now, which I like what he's saying and, right now. Um, you know, and then you turn around when it comes to like the game today, time and um, don't you use it or give him eleven carries. Following behind him, the issue is you, Jeff Dickerson. The issue is you, asshole. Matt, to that point on Montgomery, you know, if you guys are going to close this out, finish out on a run here. How important is it going to be for him to keep playing at at the level he's playing at? It well, seems like you said well. you guys are feeding off him. It seems like when he's running like this, it just this opens up those you know, possibilities for you guys on offense. The, it is. It's it you you have to be able to um, you know you get down in games like this. You have to be able to, to run the football. Um, you has have been to be able to keep them years. off balance with awesome. play actions uh, when you're just in the, the drop back game, whether it's on third down or first or second. 
Uh, you got to be efficient with pass pro. And so I don't know what our average was on first or second down running the ball, but it felt pretty good. And when you're able to get chunks on first or second, it keep, against this defense on third down, these guys are unbelievable on third down. And we, one of the things that we said all week long was if we win third down, we will have a great chance at winning this game. And uh, I have to look down here at the numbers, but it looks like we were six for 12 on third oh, down geez. against this defense. If and I'll anybody that wins week. third down, so, um, they have a great chance. It starts with the run game. And our guys did a great it's kind, kind of important, Coach. Coach. Kind of important, Coach. Uh, Donnie, uh, he, with, with he unearthed that all by himself, it's, though. It's, they, oh, they my God. Really How many mocks did he do? Jason Leisure. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, it looked like you were contributing some defensive coaching there on that Hail Mary. I saw you uh, conferring with Chuck and yelling something. Yeah, that's what, what a head coach should what do. What was your input? What was on your mind on that final play? Well, it's important in those times um, to let these defensive coaches know what you're thinking from an offensive perspective. You know, so for me to be able to tell them, hey, listen, we ha they have this much time left. Here's what they could do. Here's what they're going to be looking to do. And then I don't tell him what to do, but I, I just tell him from the offensive perspective what he's thinking or what they should be thinking. And uh, and then they go ahead and tell make the calls. And Thunder so girl. Uh, I thought that he made the right call. And then our guys have to execute. Imagine, we practice how many carries every, you think Montgomery would have situation. Several of them. if so it was good or Daryl didn't get fruition. You were yelling that's, it to a player, too, I think. It. That's what like. I want to know. To do what? You looked like you were yelling to a player on the field. Were you, something. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we were just talking through uh, some technique of how we want that guy to play. Uh, you know, to make sure that we protect. You know the what, Coach? The Running the ball helps Kevin you get game. to the point of your identity. Man, It'll help you so win. About Mitch in this kind Jesus of new Christ, new get a fucking fullback. How does it help David though? How how has David benefited from this style of offense? Well, it's big because you know you have the Can't the threat of Mitch think. getting out onto the edge and um, and then the play actions. You got to keep him you know off balance with that. So. It's all working in sync right now. All, all three parts of that are, are good. And then when we get down in the red zone, um, you know, you lose a little bit of that field. They, they have an extra defender with the back end line. So uh, we want to be efficient there and um, probably would have liked to maybe have a couple more touchdowns. You, uh, you had we, man we to that, man that coverage position. We didn't the play Tyro before us out Dang. of it with, with some good field goals. And he runs RPO and right now, the wrong when you watch it. I mean, you, you got man to man. Working. Together, lob the ball up to fucking Graham and score there. Brad Biggs. So Mitch made the wrong read. Hey, Matt, uh, I'd like to know when in the week you made the decision to take the ball if you won the coin toss. Uh, kind of why and what went Pretty into good that. Question, and Biggs. Can you recall the last time you, you said I'll take the ball? Rating he didn't default to the defense, Phil, like uh, we yeah, talked about. He didn't. So – it, it was it was it kind um, of is because it was probably the the middle of the week uh and you just kind of think through different situations and we you know we talk about it and uh i just i just know that right now um it, it's it just it just seemed like the right thing to do now i look back at it and it. like we went three and out so took his um, greek maybe it diner right menu. decision but i shredded it was just it. something for us uh, to change it up run a little the bit ball and, uh, with david you know, this is what we ended up doing yeah, last one for Coach JJ. I would love Matt, to take to over your job, about, Matt, because I know this team is better than it. to be where your eyes are. Over the last couple of games, has that been something you've seen out of him that that his eyes are going where your eyes are going on these plays? Yeah, he's doing a good job with that. You know, he's he's in a he's in a place right now throughout the weeks where he's just really, uh, you know, as we've talked about, we're we're all collaborating, talking through schematics of what you know the 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 plays and what we like, what he feels good with. And not that we haven't been doing that before, but you can, you can obviously see that some of the stuff is a little different. And so it's, it's fitting us and um, it's working. And so what we got to do now is just make sure that um, we don't get stale with it and that we always try to stay one step ahead of these defenses because you start having tendencies in what you do. And so we want to help him out. We want to help our offense out. And I want to credit our, our coaching staff on offense for, um, for really, you know, working through all this, staying together, and, and all of us just having a lot of input. It's, it's it, that part's been good. Thanks, Coach. All right, take care. All right, Coach. There you have it, Shane. Coach Nagy. Coach Nagy. I I just get upset because things that are so simple to see. Yeah, it's it's all over this. Franchise, Phil. Unfortunately, 
you got this kid that's so talented. Get a fullback in here for him. I don't care if you don't run the eye. Run, uh -oh. Get a fullback uh -oh, in Oh, look who's up in the presser. I can see the smile on Claude's face right now. <laughs> <laughs> Claude's in a dark room, and we still could see his smile because of the next guy they're going to interview. It's crazy. But the reality for me, real quick, though, before we get to – are we going to listen to Mooney or no? Yeah, yeah but you, you can, hear if you Mooney? want to for a couple minutes, yeah. Couple minutes. He has not dropped the ball. No. Nope. And that's really something to be said. He's also so aggressive for so his size. He's he's slippery, man. He is slippery. Yes, update. Claudio is in the building producing the show today. Claudio, bring your guy on. Where is uh, he? We can definitely do better. But um it's a good to be on a positive part on the offensive side. Mo Mooney. Mo Mooney. Audio's well, you know, I think human nature would make people feel pretty down going through what you guys went through, especially with the offense struggling. Well, what's that confidence level like? What are you guys feeling like on the sideline and in the huddle with the way you guys are going? Up? Uh, we're, we're, we're very mentally strong on offense. Uh, I would have to say the whole team, actually. I mean, it's been a crazy season. and uh, But, um, I mean, it definitely gives us a lot of confidence from coming from practice of just uh, everything looking way smoother and just uh, doing it in the game executing-wise. So um, we definitely have that confidence, and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look well. If you're saying <clears throat> this, like Andrew Brown, they have good JJ. pieces to build on. That's why we've Turn been When you guys were on that run, I think it was get rid of Nagy. With a more than pace. What's just the, the confidence That's like in the huddle, and, and what just honest, Mitch saying to you guys during honest, that Honest, real stretch? talk. Uh, he, was just, he was just giving us the confidence and stuff. It was, everything was feeding off him and Sam. Uh, just coming off uh, their us to forget a shout. See it? Just uh, yeah. pushing confidence. Everything feeding off him and never, Sam. Like, you know, hey, let's talk about Mustafa first down. Like, um, or just I'll being like uh, Mustafa's like playing the hard plays of the of the, of the um, drive. Like you know, you have those certain plays where like, hey, we gotta get this. Facebook you know, user, just, go uh, streamyard.com slash Cam Facebook. Ellis. Check in. Give them your name. Well, no, we when, know who as you an are. offense, when you guys see David Montgomery, you know, pulling two, three guys into an end zone, what, what kind of what kind of energy does that give you guys as a whole? This is David called is a easy, layup man. question you always know, uh, in the gonna, business. He's going to run through a, either two or three guys, regardless of who is around. Uh, what do you uh, see? Man, David's a monster. David carrying four guys. You know, he's gonna, uh, you know what? I get pissed his, off. Uh, I wish I would have got a ball past him. Pat what, Finley? What is he going to say there? Come on, ask him something real. What, what does the 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 possibility of a playoff berth do for everybody's energy <laughs> level? <laughs> They're pissed, the Pat. You moron. You know what it yeah, does? We feel like we're in playoffs right now, so that's our mindset. Makes us just, order uh, pizzas. Being in that playoff and mindset, play Madden uh, just, uh, twenty four seven. You know, not losing. That's what it does. So, um, why do they ask? What, what goes on throughout the season? We're just gonna try to finish it out and have a. Uh, the other team do their thing so we can but get this in. kid is better Zach Pearson physically blocking <laughs> than JP Holt. Hey Darnell, are you noticing uh defensive backs JP kind of Holt shouldn't be on your team more? and if so what do you have to do differently in terms that's of Zach Pearson that's that our one. boy Didn't Zach like Pearson in, uh, in the beginning well in the beginning <laughs> of the season they were, they were respecting it well and then uh they seen that I can run routes as well so uh Holy, now I'm just I heard actually his just voice. giving them my speed off rip letting them know it's, it's still there you're still gonna have to respect it regardless. And then uh I mean I'll, I'll probably run something quick. So I mean I put it all together and uh use my quickness and my speed at the same time. One more for Darnell, JJ. Darnell, that yeah. juke move you had uh on the near the sideline, how did you pull that off without going out of bounds? Yeah, that was a slippery one. Uh which which way? The right? <laughs> uh going uh right to <laughs> this left. This kid is great. Right <laughs> I'm not even remembering. I he don't even remember. remember. He's, got to, he's got to review the tape. He's, he's got to review the tape. I tried to juke him, but he had on too long. I, I'm not Honestly. even knowing which, which one you're talking about. How many plays I played, oh, I don't even remember. Let's People don't. How did the fuck did you do Thanks, that? I don't, Thank you. I don't even fucking remember what play you're talking about. And those are the good ones that do that. This kid is slippery. He's tenacious. He's focused. He's tough. Like I said, this isn't bullshit. I've put up tape. Where Darnell Mooney's in motion, leading up B gap, filling on a strong safety or a linebacker with more technique 
and fundamentals than your and f- entire offensive line and your fullback. Listen, real quick, when you're when we on this network harp on fundamentals, when my father comes on and talks about it, when we're talking about it, when I you see my tape breakdowns and I'm very hard and, and people are like, well, well, well. Listen, I'll tell you a quick story, then we'll get to our guests. A karate instructor was five foot three, shorter than me, Shane. Okay. Mm-hmm. Our Hofstra captain, left tackle, was six foot seven, 348 pounds. He is in this martial arts class, and the martial arts teacher is talking about fundamentals and techniques. And this guy is a polished left tackle captain, blah, blah, blah. Got NFL aspirations. So the guy asks him at five foot three to come at him and give everything you got. I will take you down no matter what you do. The guy conceitedly is laughing. I don't want to do that. Now everybody's watching. Now the <laughs> Mr. Miyagi type is laughing at him. No, I'm telling you, you'll get an A if you take me down. Guy comes at him. Boom. He has him down in one fucking second. One second takes him down because he's practicing fundamental fucking techniques against the human body. This is a sport where fundamentals will win out when you're dealing with professional athletes that are all talented physically and with that kind of passion. That's why we preach on it. That's why the details of this coaching staff drive me insane. I wanted to just get that out there because yeah. if you do fundamentally sound things, you could dominate people. You could. One more time, Phil. One more for time. The... Let StreamYard see your Facebook live comments. Planning a comment on a live video inside a Facebook group. We love your comment. You got to go over there. Let StreamYard see you. Let them know. And there you go. You just is that really what it is or is that not in an instruction just no get, that's that that's if you, what it's going to look yeah, like yeah that's what it's going to look like you you click on it except it takes 10 seconds i mean i know we probably haven't let people know enough at this point that's well, why there's people <laughs> there's always new people coming yeah so we got to give that an understand we, I blame, to, maybe we're too hard on people but yeah. check i blame i blame i blame <laughs> oh, yeah. the dark night there covid <laughs> night covid night Sorry, Claudia. Listen, every week we bring on you hundred crew, you patrons or hundred crew fans of our show, our network, and Bears fans. We got to have hype when you come on here. Bring it on our first. Shane told me I got all the guests today, so hopefully this guest brings it. But you got to have hype. It's one hundred crew hot takes. Phil and Shane bringing on a fan to talk Bears, and what just happened in the Bears game each and every week. You have to have hype. Phil's always telling me to hype. You can't be flat. So be ready, be prepared, and bring your passion. And hype coming out of my ass. It's 100 Crew Hot Takes. Hashtag Spencer Strong. Those are big time fucking throws. Big time throws today by the mid. This is your favorite Bears post game show, Bears Hour Live. Yo, 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 what's up, guys? Thunder girl, there she there is. There she is. I'm here. You're, you're surprising me. Went from the chat, started at yeah. the chat, now you're here. Yep. You started from the chat, now you're in here. Look at this. You're bringing that fire to the stage. Yes, I am. I'm happy. Man, the Bears always have my heart up in my throat. <laughs> like, my, my heart, my, my, like, I can feel my heart beating, man. <laughs> so talk about this game today. What were your thoughts about what you saw out Man, there? If I was Nagy and if I was Pagano, I'm in them refs' faces and being like, yes. are you kidding me? Come on. Yes. You gave us a delay a game and it's your fault? No, we're not taking this delay a game. That was a huge, that huge. P- that pass interference against, uh, what was it, uh, Vildor? Vildor. Vildor, yeah. Vildor? Kendall Vildor. No. They the the Vikings defender had Mo- had Mooney's arm in the end zone pulling his arm down. That should have been pass interference. Absolutely, these refs are blind. Phil, really? real quick before we move on to, to more, uh, you guys. Mitch is speaking. Uh, probably, I would say it's probably kind of important to put him up there. Audio's for a few got minutes, him. Listen to him. 
Yeah, yeah he's ready to go. Um, just there we go. intensity and focus that I that I like to see, and we're in a good spot. And we just got to keep that going. You're allowed yeah, to comment, like, Thunder Girl, when you feel it. And that's, I'm curious uh, what happened in the end zone uh, on the pick. Said. Matt said he thought maybe the ball got away from you, but he, <laughs> that he had wanted to ask you. So I figured I would. Yeah, it got it got away from me a little bit. Um, I just I, th I thought I could make a little bit better of a throw and also a little bit better of a decision down there. Um, the, that would be when I, I want back. Uh, just <laughs> just we need a touchdown in that situation or a field goal at the least to to put them away. Um, luckily, the defense had my back coming up with a big stop at the yep, end. Not there. making any excuses. Um, and my teammates had my back too. So, but that that is one throw I definitely would want to have back. It just mm -hmm. it, it didn't go exactly where I wanted it to go. When you said better decision, was there someone else open you saw afterwards, or was it just if it's not there, throw it away? It, more of a if it's not there, throw it away situation. Um, it, it's it's got to be in a spot where either A Rob can get it or nobody, and it just it, it sailed on me a little bit. Steve Leventhal. That's right. He learned. You got to learn from it. That's how you you make mistakes. I hated the call. I hated the personnel. JJ. Mitch, over the last couple of years, we've, we've been asking Coach Nagy about, you know, you and his having his eyes matching on a play. So, you know, your eyes matching where he's looking on a play. Do you feel like over the last three weeks that's been happening more, that you've been more in sync with what Coach Nagy and, and also then Coach Lazer are looking at on these plays? Yes, definitely. I would say so. I think I'm, I'm just going out there trusting what I'm seeing and I'm getting the ball in the right place. Um, of course, there's always a couple times a game where I'm on the field and I see something that happens differently than what they see in the sidelines or up on the box. But we, we just communicate that stuff on the sidelines, um, continue to improve, move forward and have that constant um, communication and dialogue that helps us get better. But I definitely feel like my highs have been in the right sp spot and um, I'm, I'm doing what I'm coached to do and just trying to make plays for the offense. Steve Leventhal. Definitely playing with more heart. Um, yeah, Mitch, um, can you talk Confidence. about you know, David Montgomery and what it means Passion to the offense when coming he outgained and outscored one of the league's premier rushers in Dalvin Cook? Yeah, because yeah, we have David's a coach that doesn't back. run. He runs with such great passion and will when he has the ball in his hands. Um, and, and him and I Let's both know that it all starts up front coach. with this offensive line. The way they're playing together, coming off the line. And, and I've been telling coach, we through. gotta run the ball. Um, well, you get David like in open 32. field, he's a special back. He's gonna make guys miss, guys are gonna bounce off of him. And, and he runs harder than uh, anyone I've seen in person. So he, it, it's special when he has the ball in his hands and all 11 guys gotta do our job so we can continue to spring him loose. Perfect. Um, and, yep, and the O-line has done a great job doing that. Blocking until the whistle. Adam Hogue. Got it with David Montgomery. You and Mitch, got to block you, you know Mike Zimmer's defense well uh, and what he tries to do against you. Uh, what, what kind of wrinkles did he throw out there for you today, and and how did you you feel like you handled it? Yeah, I think um, they threw right. a couple pretty couple good pressures at us on third down, but I just got the ball out quick and we were able to um, get a couple you third down conversions there. But for the most part, for their pressures, um, they they did a when good job keeping them in front. I don't think they didn't, Chicago, they didn't want anything to get behind them and. That's where just the, the movements and, and our run game uh, went to work. So we did a great job running the football today, staying um, efficient on first and seven, second down so we could stay out of those third down situations where they're going to show more of those funky looks. And we know that. So um, they're just a very sound defense. They just want to have guys in the right spot so they're able to make plays. And it's a great um, post. They're, they're two safeties the in the back end. They make it hard on, on quarterbacks. No, um, Nick Foles with, does not uh, win False this rotations game. and – just jumping around and stuff like that. But I thought Mitch we did a good Hayers job. Just, um, are very upset today. And executing Mitch and, and we're able to score a good amount of points today. Truthers are very excited. Fish today. Pan. Mitch, was, it, was this game as balanced? You would have won that last game against the Vikings. The run and the pass played. working together hand in hand. Probably would have. Off that, how much is it um, you know benefiting you uh, to be able to have that with David and just kind of go back and forth with the two? It's huge. We want to we want to be a balanced offense for sure. And I think the run plays off the pass and, and the plat, the pass plays off the run really well. And uh, but our O line takes a lot of pride and okay. run the football. I've been telling Coach David, Nagy so for we weeks. We have that going for us. I feel like ball. everything else in our offense really opens up. Um, <laughs> and especially when you're going against uh, a Vikings defense uh, who wanted to play a little more shell, too high safety today. That's they're they're asking you to run the football. So we want to go out there, establish the run today, and the O line with their mindset and David with his. Uh, that we just went out there and that's what we did. But um, we we passed when we needed to, and it, and it was a pretty balanced game all across the board.
Dan Wiederer. Mitch, I'm, I'm curious how you feel about Cairo right now and the and the hot streak that he's on. <laughs> what? He's what special, else is he going to say? He's a special what is he season. He, he's, he was clutch for us like today. Layup uh, shit. Those field goals are are huge, and he this hit every single one of them. Game. So. You beat your um, I just gotta know when we get when we pass the fifty live, and, and still, we're down the red zone to be to be smart to continue to give him those opportunities to, to put points on the board on. for us. Um, and and he's doing a great job. We're really proud of him and the whole special teams unit. Um, uh, punt, punt, return, kick off, kick return. Um, all those guys are doing uh, doing a great job, and it, Cairo's doing awesome. But it's the operation too, Pat Scales uh, and Patty O with the, with the snap and the hold and. Those guys have been money, and I'm super proud What's of that. That's Mitch, a special teams question. Mike Berman. Jesus. Mike asked. Mitch, the compare big... the confidence the, that you and the offense are feeling right now to earlier in the season. <laughs> and how does the confidence that you guys have, the vibe that you guys have, impact what you're able question. to do? Yeah, confidence is very important. I would say we're definitely. I already know the answer. Uh, I, I don't want to quite say night and day. I want him to throw our Maggie under the bus. Way up from earlier in the season, where it just seemed like we were a little unsure about what we wanted to do, who we wanted to be. We have more of an identity now. Um, it starts with running, running the football, and and then the play action and, and the game that comes and, off that, and, and just and, being efficient on first and second down. Um, and being a balanced offense. So I feel like we have more of an identity now. Guys are buying into it. Um, there's more passion and excitement at practice over the last few weeks. We feel like we keep getting better every single week. And when you keep getting better, you just, and guys get more experience um, playing together. Uh, 11 is one. I think that's when guys just really gain confidence. And then you're just able to go out there and play free, play, play together, loose. together, you play hear 11 is one. Don't you don't hear playing. BU. Last one for Mitch. Pat. Guess who's not calling plays? Guess who's in the game? Mitch, what does it say about your the team that you're able to get a win in here in a manner that really wasn't the way you guys were trying to win games earlier in the year before? It was kind of leaning on the defense. Now you got offense in a kicking game that you're confident in. What does it say about 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 the ball club? I think it says we can win in uh, various amount of ways. And today we scored points, but our defense also came came up big at the end. So it's 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 about playing complimentary football and doing whatever you have to do to go out there and get a win. And we oh. want to keep getting better. As all you got to do is watch this network. To keep getting better as a defense. This has been the so remedy the special team. So when all the three units are on the same page and clicking and, and we all play our best game, um, I think that's when we give ourselves a really good chance every single week. So we just got to keep improving, keep staying with this mindset and having great weeks of practice and enjoy this one, but get back to work tomorrow. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, guys. Here's a here's a guy. Keep Up this next guy. after Mitch, we'll have Blau Nichols. All right, we don't need Blau yet. You got you're gassed up over two games this season. How many turnovers does Mitch have in three years? Listen, you don't go by years in a mathematical equation. You go by what is going on now. You could talk about earlier in the season. This is now. This is year three with uh, or year four for Mitch. But year three of Nagy with no identity, he benches. Let's let's complete the fucking story for what it really is. He benches Mitch Trubisky when they're two and zero. Nick comes in and wins the game, brings them back right, and he moves on with Nick, who proceeds to lose six games in a row or five. Crap the bed. Exactly, and Matt Nagy's play calling. The pressure. Are you going to – no, we're not going to do that. The very next day, it's announced by him after he was a dick, him being naggy to the media. Oh, by the way, I'm telling you that I'm not going to be calling plays. I'm paraphrasing now. Let's not get this fucking story twisted here with that comment. We're championing nobody here. We are calling a spade a spade. Today, Mitch Trubisky was the key cog – in the wheel of this offense. Obviously, the oil and the engine was David Montgomery and that everybody else fell into line. And that's the remedy. That's the penicillin for this football team, Thunder Girl. Running the ball, action off, boot off of it in a game of inches. You get false steps, you get those inches. And when you have a quarterback that's mobile, confident, accurate, 
and is understanding his personnel surrounding him, you see plays that are being made. So we are excited because there's hope, and that's how it should be. We still are going to be critical because the tape never lies. So that's the reality of that situation. Thunder Girl. Yeah, calling plays that benefit the the players on the field, the players that you have, not trying to force feed your so-called plays with, like, forcing it. You can't force something if you don't have the players to to do it. It's unbelievable. Every good head coach knows you call plays with what you have and not call plays because you want to call these plays. We see you every week in the chat dropping knowledge and passion in your – your chats we it's it's awesome that we get to meet people in person last week you saw dre you saw ryan billings you saw our guy uh i always forget my man's name hansen from fucking tennessee with the axe the bread you see you guys for the passion that you have that you bring to the table but also the knowledge we don't talk down to anybody uh, in nope. fact we'll debate or we're not we're not on. even going to make fun of thunder girls purple sound panels <laughs> repping the Minnesota Vikings over there. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it is in my office, so I have to have something because my husband and I share an office. So Look at that. What do you is guys a, do? Is he a Bears fan too? Um, He's not really a sports guy. Ah. He kind of roots for the Bears because he's married me, married to me. So. <laughs> so so what you're saying is you wear the pants in the relationship. like uh... When it comes to sports, yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hey, no one's hating on you. I love the truth. I love your passion. And I'm serious. I point out your your passion every week. I feel like I'm seeing you. I, I'll go through the whole list of people. But specifically, obviously, you guys in the chat that bring the knowledge. Shane and I want to get you in here on these shows so you can join us in talking about it. There's no need to be nervous. Just come in here. Keep it 100 like you're doing. I want you to talk to a little bit about today's game. Obviously, we didn't get to see Cole Komet as much as I was going to hope to see him. Obviously, I think the Vikings were very, very aware of trying to take him away and make others step up. What was your feelings about Komet? And obviously, speak a little bit about Mitch Trubisky today. I saw Komet making some great blocking plays. You know, and like, and like we, we've we seen lately every week, it seems Mitch gets more and more confident in what he's doing and his guys. The office, the offensive line have been playing a lot better. I mean, heck, even Leno was playing good this today. His best game of the year, maybe I don't two think years. I don't think any of the offensive line had any penalties today, so that was awesome. You know, I, I, in the uh, Bears Twitter feed, they had um, a birthday wish is going out to Matt Forte. And they, they played some highlights. And everything, every highlight you see, you see Bears offensive linemen often, and other offensive players making blocks for Matt Forte. That's what we need to see on this Bears team. And we've been seeing it th- lately, the last couple of weeks, we've been seeing more offensive players making blocks when they need to. Instead of like Miller earlier in the year running off the field because he's mad he didn't get the ball. Exactly. If I was Nagy or if I was the, re- the wide receiver head, the wide receiver coach, I'd be in his face, pulling on his helmet, being like, look, dude, you need to block. Don't exactly. be mad because you didn't get the ball. You don't block, sit down on the bench. We're seeing a lot of uh, effort in regards to this offensive line. I see some of the comments there. Charles Leno, I said it at the on the Patreon halftime show. You know, when people do what they're supposed to do, you praise them. That's coaching. There should be no – Personal You're not out. Enough. None of what we do is ever just to hate on somebody when oh it's not God. warranted. That's not ever. this network. That's other fake networks that want a narrative. You know that, Thunder Girl. Yeah. I get fired up with what I see in regards to the tape and the truth of effort. The truth of effort. T O E. I always say, don't give me toe. I want fingers, just like. Yeah, that's what she's if I was one of the players on the sidelines and I see another play, a player like Eddie Jackson playing yeah. like cool, I'd be in his face like, look, dude, I know you're getting paid. I know you're a starter, but dude, what the heck is going on? Why aren't you hitting? Stop exactly. this BS, you know, fake hits trying to like play touch football. This is this is tackle football. 
Go exactly. for the tackle. Stop going for the strip. We got to get that. You got, you're getting targeted. And look, you're giving up way too many yards. It's, it's frustrating because that's another part of the story is what Shane said, the Pagano side of things. Here, your offense is finding in its identity. It took them three years with Mitch for Nagy to figure out you got to run the ball and be dominant in that area. Now, huge moves have been Mustafa going to center with white hair. Honestly, again, this is his first view, look at it. White hair looked tremendous today. Yeah, you at go left guard. Phil, yeah. I, I, I texted you. I'm sure you saw it. You go back to that that uh, first touchdown run by David Montgomery. Just run it back. Focus on Cody Whitehair, and if you love football, you're gonna love you're gonna love what Cody Whitehair does there. I mean, he puts on he puts on a clinic. He needs to stay He's there, Phil. And it, yeah, it's they or, can't. Here's the worst case: it's not center, it's to left tackle. If you're gonna move on from Leno and free up cap space like that, I know you don't want to move him again, but. I'm just saying, if I was the head coach or uh, offensive line coach and or offensive coordinator, Cody Whitehair is a talented motherfucker. And you watch him, maybe he was banged up. Now that he's there at left guard, you hear Mooney describe it. Sam in there calling. Play. Mooney's throwing Sam's name in there because Sam is actually doing that. He's taking ownership. That center position, we had Olin Krutz on. Playing with aggression. Exactly. Yeah. You have to be a leader. You got to call out the front. Where's the mic? And let everybody know what you're what they need to do. But that doesn't end the responsibility. You got to do what Thunder Girl said. You have to now maintain your part of the job. And that's be aggressive. Play to the whistle. Get off the ball. Play to the whistle. Get your tech. He hasn't been perfect, but he's been the leader that this team needed on the offensive because you weren't getting it with fucking soft as puppy ship speed bump. You weren't getting it with Bobby Massey. I don't know. Is there a, am I? There are still some plays where Leno flopped like a walrus. I'm sure. I honestly, Charles, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to hate too much on Charles. No, he did the too today. Tell me. It, the I'll the, one, the one week on keeping it in a hundred that we're probably not going to do a bear up, bear down is Phil. Phil might even be able to, to, to give Charles a bear up. Listen, Who knows? If Charles, I will break down the tape. It'll come out on Tuesday. Keeping it 100 is going to be live Tuesday night. So the tape never lies. Patron version will come out Wednesday or Thursday of Christmas Day, Christmas week. we got a big week planned. But, yeah, we're going to have patrons on, 12 of them, talking football, going to Smoke weed every day. I don't know if he's going to be. He is in the. He's producing the oh, show. He's coming back. He is told he coming me. back. He's me. coming he back. Teeth. I can see his teeth only. Yeah. <laughs> in his head. Yes. So Claudio. Look right. at him. Yo, Claudio, man. I'm glad you're feeling better. <laughs> Look at that. Thunder Girl giving you some love, Claudio. See yeah, it. my brother's actually doing a lot better, too. He's on a, He's uh, been moved to a rehab hospital. So Nice. Things are starting to look up. That's great. Right. Yes. All our 100 crew members have been thinking of you, your brother, obviously. How's your dad doing? My dad is doing well. He That's was good hoping to hear. that the game was going to be on local so he can come on and talk about it. But hopefully we'll get maybe we could surprise and get him on for the Christmas show. Claudio, Claudio can get him in, in the illegal stream of the game, can he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Now we're going to – that's going to be copyrighted. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to get shut down again. But, yeah, it's been a great day. You know, the Bears still have hope. Mitch – Came out there, did his. Seeing a lot of guys playing with heart. That's what yeah. you want to see. And obviously, playing with heart, playing with passion. We're going to call out the ones that didn't. The tape will come out next week before Eddie Christmas. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Eddie will have some showcase. Seems on. to be a consistent theme with number 39. Unfortunately, so. honestly, he used to be my favorite player, but yeah. like with what he's been doing this season, he got paid. That's the yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the, game the thing. That was the thing with I've uh, I've loved I've loved Montgomery ever since they drafted him. That was my number one running back. That's what I told somebody today, uh, Thunder Girl. It's like, yeah, I'm not saying that a lot of people don't like 
I've been fucking championing this guy since he was coming out of the draft and telling people this is the reason why, not him, that he's, he's not somebody that just goes. Yeah, now, that he, now that he has an offensive line that can block uh, him, you're, you're seeing what he can do. And the All the, these national coverages that are talking about how bad Montgomery was. It's not Montgomery. It's the offensive line not blocking. Exactly. And it's been a troubling sight for us who watch the tape, who give the the reality of the truth where it matters most. I'm not telling people. I'm teaching. That's the difference. Right, Ryan Cox? Teaching. And that's why I want you guys to become patrons. So if you love the, this game of football and you want to see it broken down, Obviously, you can go to our channel, see it on the YouTube channel, but if you want in-depth defense and player analysis, especially as we move towards the draft, I was teasing some people about Mac Jones and our, our breakdowns of that prospect, that quarterback from Alabama, who I'm very high on as well as Shane is, we're going to be doing draft analysis like nobody else especially with a, a focus as a GM and in an organization drafting for the Chicago Bears. Obviously, we'll give our big boards overall, but a real focus on what the Bears should do and these players. So if you want that kind of analysis, coaching, teaching, firing, Black Monday pop-up shows, video analysis and breakdowns of draft prospects as well as free agency it's not going to be on our regular channel. You're going to have to become a patron and you'll be getting all this stuff as well. As I'd love to see how the Bears could play now that the offensive line are playing like they are, how Montgomery and Tariq Cohen would do if they had, you know, that one-two well, punch with Tariq and, and – I don't uh, even, I don't Montgomery. even know if that's an offensive line issue as much as it is a, a coaching issue. Yeah. Are they going to use them together? That's – that's something we've seen in Chicago for years, even pre Nagy. Not with Nagy as the head coach, we're not. No, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It, it, it comes down to Nagy that. Nagy needs to go. Go. Yeah, yeah Nagy's got to go. Let me answer Back this the question. and leave. On the business side. Draft Get out of Chicago. Now, draft analysis will some – we haven't really discussed how much, but you really want the in-depth analysis, it's going to be on the patron side. $7 a month before December 31st. We'll get you grandfathered in. Sorry about that, Thunder Girl. Just no, business fine. side. Business side. Well Aggie, I'm bucks. right. With you. Well worth the seven bucks. You're in there. You're one of our patrons. Number Thank 66. You. That was my father's number. His college number, yeah. 66. Played at the University of Nebraska, then Texas, San Antonio. Yeah, the Trinity. Get rid of Phillips. Get rid, get rid of, of Phillips. Get rid of Nagy. And let's see what this Bear team can do. There you go. Well, you brought it today. Sure did. Brought it. I tried. <laughs> Listen, do you have anybody you want to shout out and anything uh, else you want to say? Real you... quick though, Phil, oh, I think ahead. she we won today and we haven't been able to do this. And I I think she's the, the she's lady gonna... to do it. I think she's gonna dance. Are you gonna give us a dance? Uh oh. Look at this. Uh oh. How did there we go? <laughs> oh, she that. spiked it and everything. Yeah, she set fire to her husband's side of the office. She's ready to go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she gave us a dance. Oh, man. You are now moving up the ranks in my yeah. book. <laughs> Came in here with passion. Every week you bring it. Listen, can't ask for anything better. I always ask for hype. Thunder Girl. She brought it. Fans Shout out, out to here. Mr. Strong. Shout out to Claudio. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to your dad and the rest of the TTNL. And where are you from, Thunder Girl? I'm from Freeport, Illinois. Uh, there you go. There so you about go. Like two and a half hours from Chicago. So when we come out there, when COVID's lifted, are you going to be at the TTNL barbecue tailgate? Uh, depends on if we end up moving or not. We've well, been planning on moving to uh, New Mexico to be closer to uh, my husband's dad. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So hopefully so you don't. kind of put that on hold because of COVID. Well, if you do move, you'll have to plan when we plan it all together because we'd love to have you there and we'll do a live show bring you on live with us nice there Absolutely. you go well thank you so much freeport illinois thunder Thanks girl for it's beautiful to see the person behind the passionate chat room rants Abby. exactly thank you so much thunder girl give yep. my best to your husband what's his name i'll shout him kevin. out kevin 
Take he's upstairs making friend. dinner and she's talking football with the boys down in the basement. No, actually, I think he's, uh, I think he's on the other side oh. of the wall. Kevin, thank you for allowing uh, your beautiful wife to come on and talk some bears with us. Thank you so much, Thunder Girl. She's got some power, some passion. She sure does. She, she told me. Hunt. Yeah, she told me she was going to and she came through. Listen, I have no idea who's coming on the show to uh, on these BHLs lately. Shane has taken over the guest list. I've gathered every guest for our network. I'm just saying, some of these people in the organization have to surprise me. And get some <laughs> guests because Phil, Draft Dr. Phil is pulling the whole weight, Chris Sandlin. Where are you? Where is some Claudio? Actually, Claudio had Mr. Funk. So it's been me and the Connecticut boys getting all the guests for our network. We got to see if if Shane, who else? Lawrence Fleming, the bouncer. The bouncer is going to make his first appearance on the network, right? He is. Yeah, he's I looking. Not wait. He is ready and he's looking for a wife. So <laughs> he's on the prowl. Listen, you want to come on this network and talk Chicago Bears football. You got to have hype. We're going to move on to our next guest who's on a victory, Shane. Victory winter, yeah. December day. It's snowing here in Connecticut. The Bears have won. Let's bring this. It's 100 Crew Hot Takes. Phil and Shane bringing on a fan to talk Bears and what just happened in the Bears game each and every week. You have to have hype. Phil's always telling me to hype. You can't be flat. So be ready, be prepared, and bring your passion. And hype coming out of my ass. It's 100 Crew Hot Takes. Hashtag Spencer Strong. Those are big time fucking throws. Bears Hour Live, big time throw. Here's our guy, Connor Pertain. Keeping it 100 on the network with the boys, Phil and Shane. What's up, guys? Throw that towel away after yeah. that season last year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the shirt was from that too, but I had to have oh. something Bears on. Hey, you're bringing it. You got to bring the passion. Talk about what you felt about today as you watch this game. Obviously, a uh, Thunder Girl is a hard act to follow, breaking I it know, down. Yeah. What did you think today? I mean, there's so many things that you got to go through, and I made sure to keep as much notes as I could because there's so much to go over. But it's another case of this team winning in spite of the coaching. Like you said it yourself, you're talking about these shotgun calls on third and one. You're talking about yep. J.P. Holtz being lined up on the outside. And it's funny, I'm sure you remember this too, but that's not the only time J.P. Holtz was lined mm -hmm. up outside. There was third and one in the first half. Vikings call timeout. And then J.P. Holtz gets lined up on the outside. And then Nagy decides to call timeout and finally decides, oh, maybe we should run the ball to David Montgomery on third and goal. And look what happens. You score the touchdown. Exactly. Get out of your own fucking head, Matt Nagy. David Montgomery is your guy. You've been saying it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And we all know. And listening to Nagy in that presser saying, oh, you know, I, I think we did a good job today. Or, you know, I feel that we were doing stuff really well. And as we've heard him multiple times, I have to watch the tape. We know what you're doing well because we watch the tape and we watch your analysis. So we know exactly what you need to be putting on the table and what you need to be doing in order to deliver. It's simple. Connor getting fired up, Shane. He's getting amped up. Yeah, I mean, Matt Nagy, to me, has been the biggest issue with this football team and this franchise here. And it's been going on for quite a few years. Uh, this year, I finally saw my colleague get amped up. Last week, I think he was at his most fired up I've ever seen at Coach Nagy well, and the let, coaching. Go let ahead. me expound off of that, Phil. That's my point. And I understand there's, there's a new confidence level, and I, I totally get it. This is all going to – you have to go in next week, and then it's going to come down to week 17, exactly. Green Bay in mm -hmm. Chicago, and number 10 is going to have to – number 10 is going to have to play well to exactly. prove anything. Absolutely. I'm not, 
I'm not going to blow sunshine and rainbow. Has he been playing well? Absolutely. But he also should be playing well right and now. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah. Even though they are already in the playoffs, guaranteed they're probably not going to sit many starters because it's that rivalry game. Oh, they know they're how they're going to be playing for the number one overall seed. Exactly. It might, yeah, it might come down yeah. to that, and that's where you got to have. Listen, Mitch Trubisky. I've said this before. Has played really well in big moments, and we've seen that historically with the guy. The pressures against him, he hits. You know, Allen Robinson, we line up for the kick, double doink. You know the story. Mm. The situation where he's coming in his rookie year, he's put in a predicament and a terrible situation. He makes some plays, helps you win, redirects, brings you the second year to win the NFC North. We haven't won the NFC North in years. He directed that. Then Matt Nagy decided he wanted to Matt Nagy, like Toby Hill said. Nagy's going to Nagy. Mm. And the reality is, you see it every now and then since the laser thing where Matt Nagy is going to try to gimmick his way into something. You saw it again today, and it drives me up a wall. Like just shotguns, jet sweeps on yes. third and one. Like, like third and four. Or third and three. Just drop back, isolate on the gun. The thing and they don't do it and it just drives me insane and that's why i'm not giving this coach a pass i'm not gonna mm -hmm. let and none, none of you should either allow the mccaskies to hide behind you know anyone wins, any wins in the covid or anything like that today they won the football game they should have destroyed this thing. <laughs> yeah. they're a better for percent we both picked this the Bears to beat the Vikings. Yeah, it was 27-17. I think you were very similar, weren't you? I think we were at this. I was, I was even, even I don't even remember, but I <laughs> picked them to win. And that's the reality of what. Nerd alert. He didn't. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> Our resident nerd. And uh, I just, I don't know. I get so sick and tired of taking, like, you don't take the path less traveled you take the path the straight line take, take the, the winning path. Way. take that <laughs> path right up and you want to find out who you are your identity you put somebody's ass down your accountability running the ball and you will see the talent that ryan pace has assembled on this roster is better than people thought and let's not re say this history here i've had many a hater tell me khalil mack sucks robert <laughs> quinn sucks david montgomery sucks cole Komet is the 12th best tight end in the draft don't know why they drafted him they over and over i've seen people say against what shane or phil or whoever is saying on this network and then what happens the next week? They fucking write in a sports mockery story saying what Shane and Phil fucking said. All <laughs> I'm asking is you guys to step up. You could be in unison. You could have said this shit fucking eight years ago. Okay. But I, I'm, all I can do is do what we're talking about here. This isn't a 670 to score call-in show where we're just taking your calls and bitching about shit we don't know. This is taking fans that are passionate about this football team with guys that are passionate and analyze this team the way we do, and we're talking together truthfully. We're holding fucking Akeem motherfucking Hicks accountable. Exactly. Nobody else is doing that. I can assure you that until they listen to our fucking show and decide to do it on their show. That's the reality, okay? So Akeem Hicks to me today – did not play his best game, showed me a lack of effort, showed me a lack of fucking leadership with the that fucking the passer, completely pointless. Selfish, <laughs> selfish, shitty <clears throat> your team that needs everything to go right in shitty situations, you're going to end up losing. Mm. Fortunately, we're able to win, but that momentum started to swing on those plays, plays that we don't get the same call. We don't. We, we got fucked on the interference call. 
That was horrific. That was he offensive pass interference on Thielen. Oh my! Not the other God. way around. And he's begging for a call, and he gets it. It's so. It's fatal. It's fatal. Breaking news. The tape never lies. Network. Breaking news. What do you Little got? Breaking news here, Phil. Really? I just got a text message from somebody in the know, and Club Dub was in full effect in Minnesota. Uh, like it or me, hate it. Let's get some responses. I'm not going to say what I feel. Yeah. But I want to see some people in the chat. Club Dub, yes or no, Claudio? Claudio. Are you a yes or no, Claudio? Real quick. What's up? Sorry, I was. All right, get out of here. You suck. <laughs> no COVID or not, I put, you, I put you in the game. Better perform. I'll go to you, Connor. Club Dub, I mean... after the win today. I mean, and it, it goes back to what you're talking about, about accountability. And we're going through this philosophy of everybody talking about, oh, should we just tank and lose out so we could get a better pick in the draft? I mean, winning's winning, yes. But at the same time, there's still so many things to be disappointed about, like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Defense. This game shouldn't have been that close. And... It goes back to the Lions game, going back to that third and one play where Mitch throws the interception. Play call, absolutely awful. And that was almost the reason that your team lost, just like when you decided, oh, hey, let's pass on third down when we could, you know, run the football, which is the smarter idea. And Mitch takes the strip sack and they end up losing the game. We almost saw it, history repeat itself. And insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So... I mean, someone's got to be held accountable. And I mean, well, you, yes, know what, came you know what it all comes down to for me is if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. You better not fall flat next week in Jacksonville, exactly. who's lost 13 straight. Exactly. That's what it you, means. You talk about the, this philosophy that Nagy has of, okay, we're going 1-0 and each week, 1-0 and game by game after you just went on a six-game long skid. Congratulations, you've put together a two-game win streak now. Good job. You still got two more games to go if you have a chance getting into the playoffs. And the way that the Eagles are looking right now, it looks like Week 17 is going to matter even more to the same team that embarrassed you a couple of weeks ago. So, no, don't focus on Club Dub. Focus on the fact that, okay, we need to bear down against Jacksonville, and we need to bear down against the team that – basically made us a national embarrassment nice claudio are you ready to give your opinion club dub yes or no all right i was watching the eagles trying to score on the, the right, Cardinals we, here. again we gotta put them on a timeout i mean <laughs> we're in the middle of a show gee i thought it's covid it must have claudio affected. cut it out my guy cut it out. Out. he's gonna be cut it out this week club dub or not claude club dub no, or not. no listen <laughs> Fucking guys on fire today. <laughs> oh, man. Seriously, that was deserved there, Claude. I did what Shane did, and it was beautiful. Listen, let me say this. I see a lot of people. Listen, I turn to the temperature of the team if I'm the head coach. This matters to this team that much. Then maybe after we go up to Minnesota, after they beat us, and – really use that as a motivation of truth for your team. And if that's their maturity level, I look at my leaders like Khalil Mack and company. I don't look to fucking Eddie Jackson for what he mm. wants. You know what I'm saying? If that's like an Eddie thing and these people that have spoken, then I don't do it. But if Khalil Mack and company that know what's at stake here, to Shane's point, it's the correct one. Let me say this. For those of you who probably be watching this later and you're going to comment and troll in the chat, as a coach, I'm going to say this right fucking now. There's no area of gray. I would never be doing club dub until the fucking playoffs invitation was sent to me. Yeah, if you beat Green Bay and you go to the playoffs, yeah, fire that, that would, shit up. Yeah, That would be my fucking mantra motivation. 
I would squeeze every fucking ounce of talent out of people by using things I knew they like. I was a master manipulator. I know I'll tell you right now, Claudio can tell. I knew temperature. I knew what bothered people. And if it bothered them, I said it. I made it. I echoed it in their fucking ear until they changed course and grew as men or as boys to men. And that's really what this coach needs to do. So for me in this game, I have to, and I have very little faith in coach Nagy knowing the temperature of the team. But I think in all honesty, save that shit for the playoffs, save that shit for the playoffs. Exactly. Then you were fucking five and one. You've gone totally ass backwards. And now you're Mm -hmm. here striving, clawing, scratching, fighting, for whatever, it comes down to a Hail Mary play. And Eddie Jason, of all people, I thought he made a bad play for the record when he tipped it up. My son was here and I was teaching him. And then when I saw the replay, he actually did a good thing by tipping it up because Charles Johnson was going to catch that ball. It was coming right there if he didn't tip it. So God willed us a victory there. God will. That's a I agree game. with that that comment, Michael. I agree with that. You got to be good in all phases of the game, and there were issues on the defense clearly because it shouldn't have been that close. Like offense stepped up and did his job, like you were saying earlier. Fell yes. Charles Leno, who we've been nagging on for weeks and weeks and weeks to do something and to show up, finally shows up, and now we're talking about somebody like Akeem Hicks, who's been showing up, and now he didn't show us what we're used to seeing out of him today. So it needs to be complete in all phases of the game. It's simple. Well, if you're a shitty network with sunglass wearing Fox, then you don't know this kind of stuff. <laughs> but if you do and you react, you, you stand up for things, you stand in front and take ownership of things, mistakes, your, your like analysis, Mitch. He owned yes. up to the interception. He owned even up though to the interception. That's it's cool. not his play call, but he still owned up to the fact that, okay, I should have thrown that ball away. That's why you can't live in what Mitch did two years ago. You have to, t- to analyze it from the here and now. What I saw today was Mitch Trubisky taking ownership of what transpired and being the leader of this football. I was hoping he'd throw his coach under the bus, but technically he didn't he kind of mm. towed the line the company line but really the identity of your football team is 32 and i think you've heard that here first and foremost you could try to say whatever you want but i and don't I mean, know I, I was talking to to shane 21 about it. 26 I'm, eagles oh, just oh. scored there you go so but, yeah um, yeah, I was talking to Shane about it. Like, I, I've been a Mitch guy since the beginning. Like, I've been one of the guys who's wanted him to succeed. And obviously, you know, being, you know, where I'm from, I, I get all these Patriot fans saying, oh, Mitch Trubisky's garbage, Mitch Trubisky's garbage. And I keep trying to say to them, it's not just Mitch's fault. Like, and then they, they're all like, oh, why are you putting him on a pedestal? Why are you crowning him like he's an MVP or something? I'm like, I'm not. I'm just saying that Mitch isn't the only problem with this football team. Like when he came in in 2017, his number one wide receiver was Eddie Royal. Like it, it, exactly, and you're laughing because like, what Royal. are you supposed to do? Forgot with about that? Eddie Royal. I'm yeah. sorry, the what? I'm just really confused right now. <laughs> exactly, you got guys like Eddie Royal and Don Trillin. Where well, yeah, uh, 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 who? <laughs> You got guys like that. You have no weapons. Now, you know, you've got a somewhat confident <laughs> offensive line. You've got guys like Allen Robinson and David Montgomery. You run the football. You run the bootleg, which, again, Phil has been preaching for weeks. Run the bootleg. Do what Mitch does well. Play to Mitch's strengths because it's not like he only has weaknesses. He has strengths. Kendall and- Wright. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Kendall Wright. There's another one. Oh, my God. That I almost forgot about Alex that, Oh, a big play God. against the Ravens. Alex yeah, coming in. Listen, we can go backwards. It's not going to help you go forwards unless you're applying what you see on the football field talent-wise to get these players doing what they do best. Like you started off saying when you first came on, this coach has been about himself 
and exactly. what his offensive philosophy is coming over from Kansas City. This is how we're going to do it. This is mm-hmm. my thing. This is 2.0. You've heard and saw all this stuff. Today, he ran the Mike Shanahan, uh, Gary Kubiak offensive philosophy. Inside, outside zone, boot off of it, action mm-hmm. game off of that. And that's where Mitch is going to be successful. I've said and, it yeah, a hundred times about Mitch Trubisky. If he was coached by them, we'd be talking about this shit differently with Mitch. It's always been a coaching issue. I said to Shane, if this guy could learn and let go of his pride, then you're going to see a different Bears team and a different philosophy. 100%. But Mitch and Matt Nagy will not be together. They just exactly. can't. They're going. Because they're Mitch, figuring this out too late. Exactly. Mitch is doing well without Matt calling the plays. Is that coincidence, Shane? No, exactly. Absolutely not. Exactly. So, listen. I see this so many times. Like I, we've talked about it several times here. This football team will be what it is. The penicillin that ails them is through the run game and getting that offensive line together today. You didn't hear me complain once about Charlie Leno speed bump, Charlie, and that's to his credit. And I'll exactly. champion him. I'll, I'll isolate him on the tape and give him praise. Last week I praised him on the tape. Never lies. I, I was, were you shocked Shane? I had to give him credit. He fired out. He turned his ass and made the hole and gave effort. There's nothing personal that we are going to do on this network when it comes to the Chicago Bears. All we're trying to do is identify the outliers, the things that are going to fumble us or create us a, a bad situation moving forward. And then really you're going to look at what you can draft – and how you can improve this team. Like if you, I'm asking you now, Connor, before we let you go, right now, number one need of this Chicago Bears team right now. Don't say coach. I'm talking about as far as the personnel. What's your number one need here? I mean, it's good to not have to say kicker because let's talk about how Cairo Santos (laughs) was has continued to be great. Um, I mean – I mean, if Leno keeps playing, <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you're distracting our guests, Claudio or Shane, whoever. I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I mean, if Leno has finally gotten that kick under his ass, then I mean, I might not say left tackle. I mean, I feel like our wide receiving core has been good. You got Mustafer bars and. Uh, Whitehair holding down the center of the offense now. I mean, obviously, Monty is got to be your identity. Yeah. I mean, I would say quarterback. Or, I mean, because, I mean, it's difficult to find a place where we don't have depth on defense. Like, we talk about these guys like John Jenkins, Barcavius Mango. Mango. Nichols had a hell of a game today. Vildor and Shelly, they actually played all right for the scheme that was coached to them today. By the way, Pagano maybe scheme a bit better. So, <laughs> I, and that actually leads me to a follow-up question for you guys, because I see a lot of people saying, oh my God, we need to keep Mitch now. Do you guys even see any sort of way that that's going to logically happen? Well, you didn't answer my question. No, oh. no. <laughs> well, I was. He's got to review the tape. He's got to review the I tape. Do. I, sorry, I, I Give think me one I position. Feel, you feel uh, more confident with Mitch, I could see. I my do. answer to you, I can't see Mitch and Matt Nagy coexisting. I can't see that because right. Matt Nagy, I've discovered, <laughs> based on this season, last year we could say, well, he tried and this, this. They went out, traded for Nick Foles, and Matt Nagy leapt at the chance to bench Mitch to put Nick in, and you know the story. So I felt like Mitch was at his best I've ever seen him at the presser calling out Matt Nagy and him including actual thoughts to me that I want to do, that I am the franchise quarterback. Shane and I have said this for years, saying you need to do what he does. I saw – well, uh, Cornelius Squall saying that, that's exactly right. 
That's all I ask you to remember the truth. Reality is get under center, do the things that this kid does well, and he's going to grow and be a better football. He's more talented. All of the fundamental shit, flaws and throwing and all those things you could fix, but you can't fix stupidity. And that's where the head coach was failing. Yeah, and what it comes down to, Phil, is you can't forget Mitch is a free agent. Exactly. Right. And if exactly. Nagy's here, Mitch has got – now Mitch gets to choose if he wants to work with Matt Nagy. Right. And I I agree with Phil there. I just don't see it happening, and you can't go out and – there's no way in hell you're fucking tagging Mitch Trubisky. To, to, to actually answer your question, though, because yeah. I, got, I got sidetracked with the Mitch thing real quick, I would still say offensive line help maybe on the tackles on the outside. So maybe. That, you know, maybe. More. Take, get rid of that, maybe. Definitely. Definitely on the Or tackles. honestly, the way Eddie Jackson's been playing, I would say safety. <laughs> yeah, and you're there not you I mean, he's not going anywhere with that I, with that contract. I hear you. And you bring in the passion and truth here for us. And that's what we want. Do you have anybody you want to shout out real quick? Uh, well, I'll, you- I'll shout out I'll shout out the great state of the four oh one, because I know we talked Phil. Uh Living, living in the same state as Dad O, so I'll shout out him. Hope he's feeling better. Shout out to Claudio. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to all the patrons. Number 249 here. 249. Nice. From Rhode Subscribe. Island, if you are wondering where the 401 is hmm. from. Rhode Island. You're up in Providence, right? Uh, East Providence, yeah. East like Providence. Yeah, Providence, East Providence, yeah. Look at you. Have to, get some, have to get some Iggy's Doughboys sometime. They still have the the mall up there in Providence. It's got the oh, carpet. Yeah. The car, it's got the carpet in it. <laughs> yeah, yes, they do. Yes, they yeah. do. Yeah, uh, malls are closing all over the place. Oh yeah, the oh, it's yeah, it's, it's, crazy. it's crazy. We got a mall like six minutes. My daughter's working at the mall, and they're about to close it. It's crazy. Amazon yeah. and COVID combined has been mm-hmm. a crazy time. But you have been not crazy. You've been bringing it. You brought the passion. You had a tough guest to follow tough act to follow and thunder girl but you brought it thank you for sh- asking about my dad and everything appreciate you there's a little cabbage patch Look, dance there giving for you it. a dance shane look at that yeah i Victory think we could dance we, we could have did we, we could have done without that i think <laughs> <laughs> you guys always asking people to dance and i do it without you even need me to ask and that's that's what i can no think. nothing okay. but love for you thank you okay. for coming on appreciate you it's nice like i said to put a name to the chat in the face to the chat absolutely text. so thank you for coming on connor you are what number 294 249 249, 249. 249. i had it backwards 249 <laughs> he's a little uh jason campbell ty hallett <laughs> 24 oh, God, Jason, Ryan, and jim mcmahon come on Hey, there you go. There That's you better. Go. There you well, go. What Brad May or oh no, Paul Enger, Brad Maynard, and Jim McMahon. There you go. There you go. For you. There you go. Should have went all that? special teamers right oh. there and put in Robbie Gold, but oh, it's all good. Uh, it's it's all good. True. <laughs> Thank you for uh, coming on, and lot, joining guys. us on Thanks, man. Our Live, man. What another good guest, Shane. Yeah, we're we're knocking doing him a guest out. today, or do we have one more? Yeah. That- there he is, Claude. And he's on mute. <laughs> he did it. He's on mute. He's on. You gotta there, he is. there he is. I was in the li- listen. I was in the living room before with my wife and kids. That's why I didn't want to. I wasn't paying attention to much going on really. So we're not. Uh, we're we're finally the first day that my wife is kind of feeling better. So we're kind of. Uh, we love that. hearing that. Yeah, that's yeah. big so now, news. Yeah, Everyone's been asking about you. I've gotten so many DMs, messages, and everything like that about you. I appreciate so, it. Now you're here. You can yeah, thank I'm, everybody. And... Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you, everybody, obviously. I mean, I'm feeling better, and, and I've been feeling better for a few days, but like I said, my wife started getting sick, and she actually had it worse than me, so I had to kind of just, you know, uh, hang low. And, and So you want to you wanna make your big announcement to the to the crew that you're going to – are you going to be available for the Christmas show? Tuesday, Tuesday night? night. Oh, Wednesday? Tu- oh, Tuesday. Tuesday. We're doing we're Tuesday? Changing. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm available now, yeah. Definitely. Big plays are right. nice. They're good. We need more of those. Yeah. Yeah. So so we're gonna get more of those, Claudia. Yeah. Tuesday night Christmas show sounds good. Let's yeah. Tuesday night this week, the Christmas show. Patrons 
Bring a drink. Patron saints, bring your drink. We're going to get a drink on. I'm going to have De Serono or I'm going to have Shane's Christmas drink. Oh, that you got to do, no, do I'm gonna that. Try do to do. I got to find San, this. What is San, it? San, I'll, I can put the, you want me to yeah. post it for everybody? Sure. Why not give everybody? Sandlin tried it today and he's he's Did raving he? about it. He yeah. It's kissing your ass. Hopefully. Is it really high? Yeah, I can taste. That's the only thing. I still can't taste. I lost my taste and smell. I still have not gotten wow. it back. So talk about COVID though, real quick while we got you. Well, it is real. Of course, yeah. I mean, Everything like, I, that you dealt with, holy cow! Yeah, I dealt with. I dealt with. Uh, not as bad as obviously a lot of people, but you know, I uh, I had the scariest thing was I started getting chest pains and had shortness of breath for a little bit, so I went to the hospital to get checked, and uh, everything was good. But the doctor pretty much was like, uh, you know, we can't tell you why you're having that. We don't know. So that's what's so scary about this thing. It's it's it affects people differently, and 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 things it does to people. Doctors don't even know why it's happening, so that's a little scary, you know. But um, smoke weed every day. It's the only that cure. Definitely, that was definitely not the cure. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely not the cure. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, you know, and, and another thing is is people obviously everybody you know gives props to the to the healthcare workers and everybody, but I saw it firsthand. Even though I was yeah. only in the emergency room for a little bit. It is so tough on them because I was kind of isolated in in a room with, right. in, in other rooms or other people with COVID, and you know they don't want to come in. You know they want to call you on the they call you on the phone actually to talk to you about stuff, and because it's just they they're just see so much of it and they just you know it's they're just doing uh, such a great job. I went to Mid State uh, Medical Center in Meriden and it was uh, they did a great job, but. It was it was bad, man. You know, it's it's not it's not fun. It's not so. So everybody just even and I took it seriously, man, guys. I you know I when I cut, everybody wears a mask. I wear a mask. You know, I'm very safe, and I still got it somehow. And, and so, as much as uh, people out there take it seriously, take it even more seriously than than you think you you do. You know, that would be my advice. Well, good um, good and, advice. Stop you know, while so, you're ahead. Yeah. And understand that this is a big <laughs> issue going on in this country obviously i just wanted to give people an update because you've been asking for weeks about claudio he is back he'll be on the christmas show keeping it 100 shy city sports sponsoring tuesday night 12 patrons we're gonna skip the t- dumbest tweets this week although there are a few we might have to talk about <laughs> So real, real quick, Phil, before we forget, everybody can, if you want to make this drink for the show, it'll there's, be. There's the ingredients. Yeah. So Put six ounces there. of apple cider, a, a t- half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one ounce pinnacle salted caramel. And it vodka. doesn't, and it, and it doesn't have to be that. Like I have one that it's a cinnabon. Where do you get the caramel um, salted vodka? That Where's... would be probably best to go right to a liquor store, Phil. No, is it like a special (laughs) brand or that's no? I mean anything, anything, any flavored, any flavored vodka that you think would combine with apple cider will work. I mean, it's. Well, I want the caramel. That sounds. I know it's it's actually like it's you can't even barely even get it here. It's selling out so fast because really. Oh my god! There's thousands and thousands of people watching this show, and when we announce it so often, they put that up there. But yeah, you want to get that real quick. It is fantastic, and I'm I'm going to be sipping Shane, on them on Tuesday night. Shane will be drinking that. My backup, if I can't get the pinnacle salted caramel vodka, will be my favorite Di Serono on the rocks. I think my wife is going to yeah. join the show as well. See, yeah, she's going to be sitting with me. See, Sandlin, Sandlin can vouch for me. He went to seventeen. Seventeen. Stores. He knows the exact. He texted place. me and he's like, "I found one, and it's." 45 minutes one way and i'm like oh damn so he must have really wanted i know that sheree, sheree sheree sent me a couple of pictures yep that she she's locked Where's and she, loaded ready she to go found it look yeah but not salted so if i find the caramel sheree i'm gonna do it too caramel vodka actually this jamaican dude friends with my wife made this <laughs> salted caramel sauce that goes on top of like the cup. Yeah. Oh my god! And I tried that, and I was like, "Holy cow!" And yep. I'm not. I try not to do sugar, but I've. Steph yeah. has made. Christmas you gotta have a little. Cookies. Gotta have a little bit of fun, man. Oh, I've been. 
I got to get on the treadmill this week because. But no, it'll be goes. it'll be fun. I'm off. Tuesday is my last day. So we have no commitments. I mean, we'll we're not live. Playing. I'll yeah. debut the Ted Phillips Christmas song this week. So this is Christmas coming up. We'll play a bunch of the Christmas parodies. We're going to put those <laughs> up on the patron side, all of our Christmas parodies. Hopefully I get the other Christmas song done. But, yeah, today, big game here. Chicago Bears still have a heartbeat. They have a pulse. Uh, this team led by Mitch Trubisky and the offensive line, the things that we've really discussed for several years here, really played themselves out there. And I, I appreciate the love uh, and people saying this is exactly what we've been talking about. You guys at this night, <clears throat> Bill, you've been saying it. You got to you gotta look at it from the whole big picture, from, from the kicker. Did, did O'Donnell even punt today, Shane? No, I don't no. think he had one punt today. So this guy, this team really went out of their way today to run the football. And David Montgomery really showing the nation and everybody the true talent that he is. Give him a little crease, and he's running over people and attacking that football. And that's really, really the story of this game. The defense stepped up in the biggest moments to make a play. You had to make it. I was hoping they would fucking score yeah. there after they stopped them. They had to kick the field goal and really – Shout out to Cairo Santos. That pressure kick there after the Bears stopped them. 48 yards. 48 yards sets the tone. Because how many times have you seen the Bears stop somebody? Uh -oh. They're only up three. Yeah. They miss the field goal or they can't score to put the game out or run the clock out. And now the opponent comes down. They tie it up and you lose in overtime. None of that happened today. The Chicago Bears went up to Minnesota and they – they took care of business. Say whatever it is you want. We're not hyping nothing. I saw what I saw today, and that's really – have we seen this offense score back-to-back -back 30 points? When's the last no. time that happened? O'Donnell did punt. We had a three-and-out to start the game, one punt, 44 yards. We, Thank you. Other than Shannon that. Manley, I owe you one. He's right. The first possession, we did punt. So we had one punt today. Yeah, one, one punt, punt, 44 yards. Actually, Cap actually saw my song, seeing that person, Jose. He, I think he's going to play it on ESPN, the uh, Fire Coach Nagy Christmas. We could play yeah. it. Do you want to play it out? We'll play it out. Yeah. Shane, do you have anything else you want to add today? No, man. It's got a big week coming up for this network, big week coming up just for everybody in general, and enjoy it. The weeks are better when the Bears win, and they're they're showing a little bit of life. They're not exactly where we want them to be yet, but uh, actually got a root for Philly here to have a comeback and, and make some noise versus Arizona. But uh, hope everybody enjoys their week. Like I said, we're going to have a little bit of fun on Tuesday night. Uh, probably won't be a, a whole bunch of football, but it's going to be a lot of laughs and uh Christmas is all about friends and, and, and family, and that's exactly what we're going to uh, show you guys on Tuesday. So it should be a bunch of fun. Yeah, right at the bottom of the screen, you got to December 31st. It's coming up fast. Christmas yeah. is coming. My son is reminding me that it's only a few days away, Daddy. Santa Claus is coming. Hopefully, we get some more answers. Today was a great showcase of a team finding their identity doing the things that you want them to do. Everyone here, this guy, Logan Frost, is up in the Philippines represent. I appreciate that. You guys have been tremendous. Remember, if you're a patron, this Tuesday night, keeping it 100, you're going to be coming on the show. Make sure you have earbuds and a smart device or computer. We'll send you the link. We don't have a schedule. We only know one person that's going first on the show. That's all we know, right? And then we're going to yep. go from there. So we're going to have a lot of fun that Tuesday night. Just be prepared for it. And today, Chicago Bears victorious. I really was impressed with this football team today. Say what you want. Head coach giving up the play calls helps the impetus 
but I I really felt like he reared his head. So we'll end the show with this Tape Never Lies Network parody song. And you guys have a great week. We'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you for watching Bears Hour Live, the best post-Bears game show on the planet. On the Tape Never Lies Network.